Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. Many of you know I have that Manco Talon, um, Lanai Bighorn, whatever you want to call that huge China Quad sitting in the basement. I've been working on that for a while and it's kind of been in and out of the garage and I got so far with the troubleshooting and then I ran into trouble. I think I have it all figured out and I just I just kind of wanted to wrap up that project and you, you know perhaps teach you guys a little, a little something about the electronics. This is the um, left um, hand handlebar switches and um, you can buy these cheap. You, you buy them um, off of eBay. And, you know, left hand on off or Chinese ATV and all that. I mean, you can see how cheap they are. Um, so, easy enough to get them. Um, and by the way, um, if you have a China Quad and you leave it out in the weather, you're going to have trouble with these switches. Um, if you take this apart and look inside, this stuff is not made very well. Uh, if you have an old stereo system from the, uh, from the 80s or 90s and you open it up and you look at the switches inside, they're better made than these switches. So these switches are typically out in the weather, um, right? I mean, if you ride your quad out in the rain, <laughs> or if it rains for five minutes on it, and you're, you, you know, you don't take it inside and, you know, pack the switch in rice and dry it all out and so forth. You are going to get moisture in there. Once again, when you take it apart and look inside, you're going to realize that it's uh, that that they're very very cheaply made. Um, that's why they're seven dollars, and the ones from Honda or Yamaha or whomever. Um, the real ones, not the knockoffs from China, but the real ones are as expensive as they are. You're typically looking at, you know, 40 to 80 bucks. Used ones are, you, you know, you, maybe even over 100. Used ones, they seem to want 40 bucks. Anyway, schematically, this is what the switch looks like. Um, typically, you have power that comes from the key switch. So we all know how to find the key switch and when you turn it on it puts power into your um, your left hand switches. Now as you start doing things like go from here to here to here what you're doing is you're actually moving kind of um, two switches in one um, when you come to the first position, right, click, you close this switch here, which turns on your tail light, and you close this switch here, which turns on, oops, you close the top switch there, which turns on your, your highlight low, and then when you go the next click, um, this one opens up, and then this guy here closes, and your headlight high goes on. So, that's this switch explained all nice and easily. The second thing you do is when you push this button, all you're doing is closing this switch here, which goes out to your starting solenoid, and it closes your starting solenoid, and assuming your battery and starter and all are hooked up, your starter goes round and round. Okay. And lastly, there's one more switch, and it's this one here. And depending on how you wire it up, it could do one of two different things. And I'm going to take a moment to talk about this because I'm going to hire, wire it up backwards for my purpose. There are two wires that go into the switch, one on each side. And it's just the engine on and off switch. Now in my case, I'm going to wire it up backwards. I'm going to put 12 volts on one side of this switch. And when I turn it on, I'm going to use that to power a DC powered CDI system. The way it's supposed to be hooked up is that side is actually supposed to be hooked to ground. 
your um, CDI is powered from your stator is an AC CDI and your black wire with the white stripe when you short that to ground it turns off your quad and when you open the switch right your quad is allowed to run your CDI is turned on so um, I just wanted to go through this quick introduction and what I'm going to do now oh and also what I did is and I mentioned taking this apart when you take it apart you can label the wires like these two wires here are these two right they're for the starter um, right that's the 12 volts DC plus 12 volts DC that goes to like all these switches so or excuse me yeah this one goes to the starter which is right here and I'm gonna hook one side up so for that but anyway as you go through all these wires I labeled them all up to what who does what headlight high low and so forth so engine off right there's two of them and you can see them right there on some of the bikes some of the all-terrain vehicles the color coding is helpful on some of the all-terrain vehicles the color coding means nothing and on some of them the color coding is actually misleading you'll see colors of the wires you expect like um, red with a black stripe you expect that to be um, stator power for your your CDI system and you find out they're actually using it as a ground right so um, the, the Manco, Talon, Lanai Bighorn, Yamaha, Kodiak 260 whatever you want to call that um, heap down in my basement they almost it's almost like they deliberately miswired it or miscolored the wire so that that you become confused and you have no no clue you literally have to track the wires back to where they go so I'm going to um, hook up one of these down there and I'll go through what I did with the system and hopefully that helps you if you have a talon I'm probably going to do something similar with a bunch of these 300 EXs also because as you see there is no um, there is no left hand uh, switch for that if one is building or rebuilding a wire harness for an all-terrain vehicle pit bike UTV you're making your own little Frankenstein unit whatever you're up to the trick is to understand what you're what you're building you got a battery between the battery po positive terminal and the on and off switch is typically a fuse you turn this on you put power up to here up to your left hand switch from your left hand switch depending on what you're doing with these right you turn your lights on and off you engage your starter you know and so forth and on so you got a bunch of switches here so given that downstairs on the Manco I've mounted this thing I just want to go through what I'm going to show you before we go downstairs and start looking at the wiring on that monster now I have power coming off the key switch it goes into my left hand switch bank let's just call it that right and one of those switches I have goes to the starter right the push button for the starter we understand that and the second switch I told you guys before I was gonna build a 12 volt CDI system whenever I start building one of these let me just show you how simple it is right I buy the entire kit right off of eBay it comes with the wire harness the spare plug spark coil the whole shoot match and this is the search you use to get it okay and you can see they cost 13 14 bucks right so once you have this 
right? You just, let's start by, you just plug the coil in, it's that easy. Now, this is the CDI that comes with it, and if you count the number of lugs in there, the number of conductors, you come up with a number of five. This is a stock pit bike CDI system, CDI block unit, whatever you want to call it. What this expects is an AC from the stator to power it. Well, I don't want to do that, and the Manco doesn't offer me AC from the stator, so I needed a DC one. And this is what it looks like, and that's what it costs. And you even get the wiring diagram. I only buy these when I see that there's four pins, and they actually show me the following wiring diagram on eBay. And here's the search I used. Okay, you can see how much it costs. And what's important is DC, CDI box, four pin. Now luckily, the wiring diagram is the same between this five pin or this four pin DC one. The, um, the only difference is um, this thing uses the outer four pins and you see that black and white wire which is the on and off. Um, that's not hooked up. There's no pin for that here. So I plug in this unit into the pit bike harness and now I have to go downstairs and wire things up. And just quickly I already got the coil on, I just have to hook this to the spark plug. The green wires are ground all the time on this pit bike harness. So all you have to do is get one of these green wires to go to the engine block somewhere. And hopefully your engine block is connected to neutral on the battery and so forth and on, but you got it there. The red wire. You just have to get 12 volts from this, and I already told you where I'm going to get the 12 volts from. I'm going to get it from right here, right from my switch. So, when I turn on the power, I turn my key switch on, it turns my left hand switch on, and when I close the little switch that used to be the on and off switch, when I put it in the off position, now I'll be sending 12 volts, right, because this side of the wire I hooked up to 12 volts, right? I'm gonna send it the 12 volts into here. So this thing is ready to spark. All it needs is a signal. And where do I get that signal from? Right here, right? The blue and white wire. I take it from the pulse generator of, of the motor, put it in here, put the other side of that into ground, and I'm all ready to spark. So I wanted to show you this up here before we walk down and I show it to you on the bike um, because it's just so much easier to see up here. Um, at this point you already know where to get this from, right? And you know where to get this from and you know where to get the pit bike wire harness from. So how hard is it to build? It's a matter of just sliding a few things into where they belong. On the bike downstairs, on the Manco, I left, right, if you look at the keys, the battery, the key switch, I just plugged into the key switch to power the left hand switch. I left everything else hooked up, so to speak. And by that, the interlocks are still hooked up, right, and the whole battery charging circuit. I left all that just there. I just I just hooked up the um, the left hand switch, right? And um, I actually I did have to run some wires for the starter because the wires for the starter here were jacked up. So I had a I had to run one wire off to the starter. So when you're putting these together, 
think that you're building blocks and you're stacking them one on top of the other. You start with your battery, you got your fuse, you go to your key switch, from your key switch you're sending power to your left hand switch, and from the left hand switch now you're going to do distribution. You're going to send power to lights, you're going to send power to your starter. In my case, given that I need power for my 12 volt CDI system, I'm kind of messing with the um, kind of changing the way I'm hooking up the um, on and off switch. I'm putting 12 volts into one side of the on and off switch to power my CDI system. If I was running an AC system, I'd ground one side and then I'd run see that black and white wire? I'd run that to the other side and that's how I turn it off. This is actually meant to go to an on and off switch and this is meant to go to the on and off switches in the key switch. Right? That's how you turn off an AC CDI. We're not using it that way, we're using it as a DC CDI. See you downstairs. Here at the Manco, what do we need to make this whole thing go? The first thing we need is the pulse generator signal from the engine. And what I have here on the blue and white wire, I have the pulse generator signal and I have the other half of that signal which is ground, so to speak. Right? You always need ground. And I ran them over here and I hooked them up to my pit bike ignition system. Okay, I also, building it from up above, right, you can see the wires for my spark coil. And that whole rat's nest here, <laughs> right, some of the wires are, are already in there, just disconnected, right, you can see the connectors kind of hanging in space there. Um, their wires I took off the CDI box and so forth but anyway if I turn on the power right on remember I'm just taking power for this guy from the switch I left the less, rest of the wires intact so when I turn that on right I still have all my lights I didn't cut any of that stuff I left it all there I have this in an off state so to speak which is all the way to one direction right I have power out here and I can tell I have power out here because you can see the voltage if I move this switch to the center position which is theoretically on that remember that opens the circuit and I lose the power out here I got this hooked up backwards so I got the power out here so if I hit the starter you should see the spark. Okay. So, from here, all I have to do is instead of showing you the spark, I need to put the spark plug in the spark plug um, hole, <laughs> uh, turn the gas on, and hopefully this thing will start up. And then I could start working on <coughs> the rest of it. Such little things like lights and stuff like that. Generally speaking, whether you're buying a car or you're buying buying a quad, you kind of know you're in trouble when somebody takes the lights off of it, right? Somebody took the lights in the front and back off of that thing. It's kind of like they looked at this thing and the only thing they can think of that any had any value was the lights. This is the old right hand switch and you guys could see they did all kinds of cuts and splices and all that um, I messed with this for a while and just gave up on it I guess there's the adventurous amongst us who will actually go in there and spray the contacts and clean them up and all that kind of stuff but it, it's a lot of work to do you could buy another junkie switch for somewhere around eight bucks and uh, and go forward on what you already had or you could just you know if you really want to bite the bullet you can spend 50 to 100 bucks and put a um, quality switch on it made by Honda or somebody else make sure you get a real Honda switch though 
not one of the knockoffs because I think the knockoffs though might be better than this I'm not thinking it's of the same quality as an OEM Honda switch okay to wrap up this video what do we have to do well there we go we have battery we have lights we have power to the CDI and this thing has an automatic choke so hopefully we have ignition So it's running. If I put it in gear, that's reverse, back to neutral, it's high. I don't have the lights hooked up yet, so I can't show you those. I didn't put that much gas in the carburetor. Um, considering I'm kind of, uh, if anything goes wrong, right, it's uh, going to be fire extinguisher time. So you guys could see that for this um, China quad, probably the worst quad in the world, we managed to put together an ignition system uh, in a fairly cheap manner um, for a lot of the Honda stuff um, it's a lot easier for will this ignition system work on others I know it works on Honda's I know it works on the cheap junk uh, as long as you have a pulse generator it seems to work about some of the other um, ignition systems the pulse generator um, might do a negative pulse or on like some of the older Suzuki's and all the pulse generators um, they actually use a ferrite um, typically the China stuff is using a semiconductor pulse generators and you say what's the difference between a ferrite and a semiconductor the ferrite one is a piece of metal wrapped with wire around it uh, it's a little transformer basically where the semiconductor one is exactly as I described, kind of a Hall effect thing that um, uh, will, will it work? From a troubleshooting point of view, you could put together one of these ignition systems and I think you could get most anything started um, as long as, once again, there's a pulse generator. Um, but the question comes up, how long will it last if you have the little transformer thing you're putting out a much bigger signal than the semiconductor um, pulser which means now what do you do about that do you put a resistor in parallel um, I don't know 100 ohm resistor in parallel with it maybe that cuts the signal down a bit or maybe a thousand or maybe ten thousand or maybe 10 you, you know the only problem is if you're getting too much signal from the pulser you could end up damaging your CDI and at seven bucks each how many experiments do you want to do before you say oh I think I figured it out and fixed it there's really nothing in the literature you can't really look this up anywhere at least nowhere that I found so um, if you have an expensive bike, a Warrior or something, and you go and you look up the um, CDI for it, and it's going to be $500, you can duplicate this whole thing for $13 for the wire harness and another uh, $7. So for $20, you could take a chance. Will it work? Probably. Will it last forever? Hmm, maybe. <laughs> um, so give it a shot. I also recommend buying spare uh, CDI's. I have gotten a bad 
uh, new. They worked for like 10 pops and then they started working every other pop and then they went to every third pop then they kind of fired once at the end so um, I, I would I would always keep a keep a spare one or two um, and definitely if I did this hack even if I did it on a Honda or a Chinese bike about carrying a spare they cost seven dollars and you could say well I'll spend an extra seven dollars or I'll walk home ten miles I don't know I think it's worth the seven dollars to keep a spare I hope this helped everyone. I want everyone to keep their fingers down or keep their feet down, uh, keep their heads up, and I want everyone to get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.